Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray that those ancient words of Holy Scripture would impart a living word into us this day, that you would strengthen us for your service. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I heard a story recently uh, about a pastor who is in a very large downtown urban setting and he was looking for a parking place and he couldn't find one. He's late, running late for an appointment. He looked for a place with a meter. There wasn't one, so he parked in a no parking zone. He put this little note under the windshield. I have circled the block ten times. If I don't park here, I'll miss my appointment. Forgive us our trespasses. When he returned, he found a citation on the window with a note from the cop who said, I've circled the block for 10 years. If I don't give you a ticket, I'll lose my job. Lead us not into temptation. <laughs> now the pastor not only sinned, but he tempted the police officer to sin as well. The police officer might have given in to that temptation and sinned to deny his duty, but he didn't. He didn't give in to that temptation, and therefore he didn't give in to sin. Now sometimes people think that temptation and sin is the same thing. Oop, I had that thought. Oh, I've sinned. Well, it's not necessarily the same thing. So what's the difference between temptation and sin? Temptation is having a sinful thought enter your mind, and... Uh, but it might just pass through. But sin is acting on that thought, either by doing it or by inappropriately enjoying that thought and entertaining that thought. So, in the first chapter of his letter, the Apostle James describes it as a three-step process. Temptation, sin, and then spiritual death. This is what he says. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And he's talking about spiritual death. So clearly, there's a difference between temptation, these thoughts that assail us, and sin. As famed 20th century revivalist Billy Sunday once said, temptation is the devil looking through the keyhole and yielding is opening the door and inviting him in. Or as the great reformer Martin Luther once said, temptations, of course, cannot be avoided. We're all tempted. But because we cannot prevent the birds from flying over our heads, there is no need that we should let them nest in our hair. Don't let that temptation land and turn into sin. Now, Jesus was both fully God and fully man. Theologians describe this mystery as the hypostatic union. According to James 1.13, God cannot be tempted by evil. Therefore, it's impossible for God to be tempted and therefore, because temptation can't even come to him, that he it's impossible for God to sin. But Jesus was also man, like Adam was. And Jesus was tempted to sin. So it's important to understand that though Jesus never sinned, he truly was tempted to sin. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that Jesus, in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So all sorts of thoughts went through Jesus' mind. Selfishness, bitterness, lust, perversion, greed, deception, idolatry, drunkenness, gluttony. I mean, you name it. Any thought that's ever gone through your mind that you sort of feel ashamed of, well, those thoughts also went through Jesus' mind. But he didn't act on them. These thoughts come into us from the outside. Jesus was tempted. He was truly tempted to sin, but he did not. His temptations never gave birth to sin. So how did Jesus defeat his temptations? And I guess the relevant question today is, how do we defeat our temptations? This morning, we will examine 
four keys to defeating your temptations. Number one is asking the Holy Spirit to strengthen you, to resist you, to, for you to resist those temptations. Number two, studying the Bible that you may quickly discern the difference between truth and temptation. Number three, purposely and persistently resisting your temptations. And then number four, don't do it alone. So the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the Judean wilderness to be tempted. Now, does anyone remember what happened just before he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted? What? He was baptized. And when he was baptized, what came down upon him? Or who came down upon him? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came down in bodily form like a dove and empowered him for his earthly ministry. Now, Jesus was, was and is God, right? Always has been. So why would he need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit? Because he emptied himself of all of his God abilities and he became dependent upon the Holy Spirit, just like you and I are in our struggle against sin. So what were... So... Um, Jesus entered this 40-day period of spiritual warfare, but he entered this period of warfare fully armed. And, um, and so he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. But you know, you think about it, Jesus never did a miracle until he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He never did a public teaching until he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He never cast out demons or healed the sick until he was, what? Empowered by the Holy Spirit. And God the Father never allowed Jesus to face this level of temptation until he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the same was true for the apostles. Remember, after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, uh, he commanded them not to go out, but to wait, not to do ministry, not to do public teachings, not to heal the sick or cast out demons until they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in Luke 24, And behold, I am sending you the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. He warned them, you know, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to live out the Christian life and to do Christian ministry. So how do you... Defeat your temptations, number one, by asking the Holy Spirit to empower you to resist Satan's temptations. Now, how else was Jesus armed for his 40 days of spiritual warfare in the wilderness? Did you notice how he defeated Satan's temptations? He quoted Scripture. Right, he quoted Scripture. In Luke 4.4, 4, Jesus told Satan, It is written. And this is basically what he does each time. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Then he was quoting Deuteronomy 8.3. So he had memorized this passage. The whole verse says, Man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then when Satan tempted Jesus to jump off the temple and miraculously uh, survive his fall to show his power to everybody, Jesus again told Satan, it is said, or it is written, it is said in Scripture, he said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So how did Jesus know what passage to quote? I mean, I've thought about that sometimes. Well, gosh, if this, pass, if this temptation comes up, will, this, will I know which passage to quote against the enemy? Well, uh, since childhood, Jesus had diligently studied the Scriptures. And then in His moment of need, the Holy Spirit brought forth that Scripture that He could use to defeat the enemy's temptations. So first He needs the power of the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit brings forth that passage. So from childhood, um, uh, he had obviously studied the Scriptures, but his earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, had also clearly obeyed God's command, the Shema, from Deuteronomy chapter 6, which says, And these words that I command you today shall be upon your hearts. 
This is He's talking to the parents, and the words he's talking about are the commandments of God from the previous chapter, the Ten Commandments. So he's, he's talking to the parents and the grandparents. These commandments shall be on your hearts, parents and grandparents, and you shall teach them lackadaisically to your children. Wait, is that what it said? No, it says diligently. Teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, when you're driving to soccer practice, when you're taking the kids to school, when just, you know, any teachable moment, you shall be talking about God's commandments, not necessarily quoting them, but sharing those biblical principles with those kids and grandkids. And then as a young man, Jesus continued to study and memorize the Bible. As the theme verse for Awana, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, And be, again, lackadaisical? No, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. So Jesus thoroughly knew the scriptures and used them as the Holy Spirit brought them forth to defeat Satan's temptations. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you hadn't noticed, we are in a spiritual war right now. It's not a political war. It's not a social war. There's a spiritual war going on, and Satan is hoping to defeat you and trip you up and lure you in to the various sins in this world, things like the seven deadly sins, pride, greed, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, sloth. Satan hopes to trip you forth, to tempt you, and to bring forth sin, and to bring forth death in your life. And if you're unarmed for battle, you'll fail. But if you take up arms against him with the power of the Spirit and the power of his word, you'll defeat him. Ephesians chapter 6 describes the full armor of God, that which you need to do battle against Satan's temptations. And the word of God in here is described as the sword of the Spirit. It's not just the sword, it's the sword of the Holy Spirit. And as you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, then the Word of God, which you've hid in your heart, comes forth to defeat the, the devil's temptations. It just comes forth. It just, just pops right out of your mouth. So if you want a sword, a sword, not a pen knife, <laughs> but if you want a sword to defeat the enemy's temptations, then, then you, and you want your sword to be longer and stronger, then you, you, you need to put God's Word in your heart. You know, daily Bible readings in your home, uh, you know, coming each week to hear biblical sermons, uh, studying and discussing God's Word in your grow group. And if you're not in a grow group, get in one. We have ten here at the church. Just get in and you can study and discuss. You know, sometimes just reading the Word alone, you, you hear it, but, but uh, I don't know if you've ha this has happened to you or not, but, but you read a chapter and you can't remember a word you read. You ever been there? You know, and, and, and so sometimes you need to read it and reread it and think about it, but if you're in a group, you can discuss it and all of a sudden those little, those little oh, oh yeah, I get it now. Uh, it can be helpful to be in a group. So the, the more you study God's Word in these various ways, the longer and stronger your sword gets, and the more easily you can defeat the devil's temptations. So how do you overcome your temptations? Number one, you ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you to resist temptations. Number two, study the Bible that you may quickly discern the difference between temptations and truth. Number three, you must purposely and persistently resist the devil's temptation. There's some responsibility on you to resist and to say no. Yes, that sounds appealing. Yes, that sounds interesting. Oh, I might look into that. No, but to resist that. James 4, 7 reminds us to submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. From the prayer book, when I baptize someone, I ask this question. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness to rebel against God? And the answer is, I renounce them. I renounce them, I resist them, I stand against them. And then I ask, do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? And the response... 
I renounce them. And then I asked, do you renounce the, then I, I asked, do you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh, that is the flesh nature, your old self, that draw you from the love of God and the response? I renounce them. I renounce them. So as a baptized follower of Jesus, you promise while submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ to renounce the world, the flesh nature, and the devil and the temptations they bring to say, yes, I renounce them, I resist them. So how do you overcome the tem temptation? Number one, we need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to resist. We need God's power. Number two, to study the Bible that we can, we can know the difference quickly between truth and temptation. Number three, purposely and persistently resist the devil's temptations. And finally, number four, don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. Find a soul friend to walk with you. In the military, the first thing you do after you sign and you show up, you go to boot camp. You go to basic training. And uh, you have to go through that with your, basic, your, your, other, your fellow recruits. And you drill and you drill and you drill for weeks and weeks and weeks. And, um, and after a while, you get in a pattern and you develop this uh, uh, camaraderie with your fellow troops and you learn to obey the voice of your commanding officer and you learn the weapons of your warfare and then for the rest of your career you're going to continue to train and train and train with your fellow comrades that you can be combat ready at all times it would be crazy to think that you could join the army today and tomorrow be ready to fight the enemy. You'd end up dead or worse. So if you're going to successfully defeat your adversary, the devil, the temptations that he brings, you must be combat ready with your comrades in arms, your fellow Christians, the, the, the army of the Lord, and be combat ready at all times. So what does basic training look like for Christians? Well, for children, it looks like this. Family devotions at home. A little time of prayer, a little time of study uh, with, with your children at home. Parents and grandparents taking teachable moments to teach your children right from wrong. Sort of uh, saying, well, this is what God would have us do. A weekly worship on Sunday mornings. Things like Awana, youth crew, Sunday school. All these things help your children that's basic training but it really doesn't matter if you're 8 or 80 it's never too late for basic training and for all of us there's ongoing training month after month year after year and the biblical term for this basic training is anyone know what discipleship yes that's it that's what Jesus commanded us to do in His Great Commission. It's a mentor spending time with his or her mentees and helping them grow up. It's never done solo. There are no Lone Ranger Christians. We're meant to do this within the body of Christ, within the community of faith. So as you face temptations, admit that you can't defeat the enemy's temptations alone. Seek out a mentor, someone to guide you and help you wrestle through questions of faith. And now you're not looking for a drill sergeant. Give me 20. James. <laughs> yeah, we're not looking for someone that's going to be harsh. We're looking for someone that's going to walk with you and love you and, and understand your weaknesses and, and not beat you up for it, but, but to encourage you out and help lift you up when you fall. The Celts call this a soul friend. Someone who would walk with you, a mentor in the faith. So how do you find one? So well, I don't have one, you know? Well, you look for someone that you respect as a Christian, and you say, would, could we spend time together? I'd just like to learn some things that, that God has done in your life. Many, many years ago, uh, different people discipled me, and, uh, and today I do the same. So, if you want to defeat the devil's temptations, anyone want to? Okay.
Just a couple of you. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. you know, the rest of you just want to go down the, the wide road that leads to destruction. But if you want to, to f defeat the devil's temptations, I just I encourage you to, to take these four under your belt and, um, and uh, remember them and, and put them into practice. And God will strengthen you and protect you uh, from, from temptation. Well, through the temptation, protect you from sin and protect you from that spiritual death that comes when sin comes. Well, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for giving us these tools, these weapons of our warfare in this spiritual war. And we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen each one of us here today that we might stand firm against the wiles of the enemy. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to